Hey guys, welcome back to another video and I have a very interesting video for you today. It's a real nice day here in South Florida. The ocean's fairly calm. On YouTube, there are so many channels that uploaded videos pertaining to vacuum chambers, showing the effects of negative pressure on different objects. I have a vacuum chamber, so I'm not going to be making another vacuum chamber video to put on YouTube unless it's something completely different. But I have a better idea, one that I don't think is shown on YouTube, and that's the effect of extreme pressure on flesh and bone. And what I mean by extreme pressure is the pressure that you would encounter if your body was submerged to a level of one mile beneath the surface of the sea, 5,280 feet deep or just over 1,600 meters. I have no idea what the test results are going to show, I did not test before I made this video, but it's going to be interesting to see if it has an effect and what kind of an effect it has on flesh and bone. The good thing is I do not have to take you out into the ocean to perform this experiment. So let me take you back to the house and I'll show you exactly how the test is going to be done. Now, just like I said at the beach, we're going to be testing at one mile depth, 5,280 feet or 1,609 meters. Atmospheric pressure at sea level is 14.7 pounds per square inch. So what that means is if you take a column of air at sea level, that's one inch by one inch, a square, or 2.54 centimeters square, and you go from sea level to the highest levels of our atmosphere, that column of air is going to weigh 14.7 pounds. If you're in the ocean and you're swimming on the surface, and then you dive down 33 feet, which is 10 meters, a one inch square or 2.54 centimeters square column of water from the surface down to 33 feet is going to weigh 14.7 pounds. Every 33 feet deeper that you go, you're going to add another atmosphere. So right over here, you can see 5,280 feet divided by 33 feet, which is one atmosphere, is going to give you 160 atmospheres 160 atmospheres times 14.7 pounds per square inch gives us a pressure at one mile deep of 2,352 pounds per square inch. Now that you know the testing pressure that's required, let me take you outside and show you the testing vessel that I made to perform this experiment. Right here is the pressure testing vessel that I put together using a two and a half inch diameter thick walled steel pipe the walls are roughly four and a half millimeters or three sixteenths of an inch. You can see that right over there. You go to Home Depot, Lowe's or any other hardware store, the standard galvanized pipes are going to be much thinner and I do not want to put very high pressure in a thin walled pipe. On this end over here, I welded on a seven sixteenth inch thick mild steel disc. And you can see right there, So that's all ready to go and this should have no problem at all handling very high pressure. On the opposite end, it's going to be left open to insert the item to be tested. Once it's inserted, I'm going to take the Teflon tape that you see over here, which is yellow, place it on the threads, and then thread on this reducing cap. Now the weakest part of this entire vessel is going to be right in this area of that reducer. It's a little thinner steel than it is here but I did test this and it works just fine up to 2,750. So 2,325 should not be a problem. And you can see how thick that is on this side right here. It's very thick. This part right here is where the steel is thinner or the iron. This is a one and a quarter inch end. I placed a reducer bushing that goes from one and a quarter down to half inch. Once this is threaded on tight with the object inside, I'm going to place it vertical and I'm going to fill this with water almost to the very top. Once this is filled to the top with water, I can take this hydraulic hand pump hose, take that half inch cap off the end, take the male thread, thread it right into here, and as I'm pumping the handle up and down, I can build up pressure inside that vessel and we can see the amount displayed on this gauge. Let me show you what I'm going to place inside for this test. I'm going to be placing a chicken drumstick inside that high pressure cylinder. I got these as fresh as possible and you can see the flesh is nice. It's firm. We'll be able to place the entire thing inside. I'll take a picture before it's inserted into the tube up close front and back 
and then we'll take one after it's removed from the tube to do a comparison. I would think with pressure exceeding 2,300 pounds per square inch that this meat would get pretty much squashed to the point where it becomes mush. But I could be wrong and we're going to find out. So let me take this out, show you up close front and back, then place it inside the pipe, fill it with water, and get everything ready to go. You can see the male thread has three layers of Teflon tape on it ready to go. I'm going to place the chicken inside very carefully, drop it all the way down. Now take this end, thread it on, When the test is over, there's going to be some oil inside the cylinder, but that's not going to affect the results. It's just going to be a little bit messy to handle. Almost. All right, a little too much. That's perfect. All right, we are now ready to perform the test. But what I'm going to do first is place this entire area from the top right here to the bottom inside of a water bath. So in the event there is a failure, the pieces will fly off into the water rather than have them fly off in my direction. We are ready to go. The cylinder is underwater. The camera's aimed directly at the high pressure gauge and I'll be working the hand pump underneath the camera. Keep an eye on the gauge. We'll take it up to 2,300 range, hold it for one minute. Hopefully we don't have any leaks on my threaded connections. And after the one minute, we'll slowly let the pressure out, open up the cylinder, and see what happened to that chicken drumstick. Well, let's get going. Let's hold it right there. And right now you can see it's slowly going back down as I'm letting pressure off the hand pump. Let's open it up and see what happened inside. With the hydraulic pump removed, I'm going to drain the water out very carefully and then unscrew this cap. This is now loose enough to take off so we can take a look at the inside. And hopefully we are surprised, but it's possible nothing happened, but I really doubt that nothing happened. Because with 2,000 pounds of pressure, you would think that the flesh on that chicken leg would be completely mushed. So let's take a look. Okay, let me take it and dump it out. And looking inside, guys, it looks almost the way it did going down. The only difference is it got really mushy, which I expected because of all that pressure. But I thought it would have been a lot worse. I thought instead of becoming just a little bit mushy that all of the flesh on that bone at that pressure would have made this almost like just a really loose mush hanging off the bone, but it didn't do that. So muscle and bone at that depth, not too much of a difference occurs. The meat gets a little bit mushier, but for organs that have air spaces inside, such as lungs, you can bet that that lung would squeeze all the way down to a very small size. If you guys can think of anything else you'd like me to test at that pressure level that can fit inside the pipe, post a comment in the video description area. And if enough people rate that comment up, I will definitely make a video showing what you requested. Something that would be very cool would be to use a clear pipe. Unfortunately, I don't know any clear pipes that can withstand 23 to 2,500 pounds of pressure. But the advantage would be we could see exactly what's going on with the object inside the pipe as pressure is being applied. So more than likely, the chicken inside this pipe becomes much smaller, and as the pressure is relieved, it goes back to its original size or close to it. A pretty cool experiment if you were wondering what happens to flesh and bone at that depth. Not too much. Thank you very much for watching.